Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's episode, we're going to talk about balanced and unbalanced forces. So we've started, um, in a previous video, we looked at this idea of what is a force. We're going to recap that to start us off today. Then we're going to be looking at this idea that forces work in pairs and what happens if those pairs are balanced and what happens if those pairs are not balanced or unbalanced forces. Okay, so we're going to be thinking about the effect that all of these things will have on objects. So what is a force? Remember that we defined a force as essentially a push, a pull, or a twist. Essentially something that can cause an object to change its motion in some way. You can see some examples of it here in the images on the screen. We've got different types of pushes and pulls. We've got people stretching, pulling on a tug of war, so stretching a rope. We've got a, a, a football being kicked. We've got cats balancing on a seesaw. And we've also got um, an example of one of those non-contact forces we introduced, that is magnetism, this pulling or attracting effect. Okay, so these are all examples of forces. And so these, and some of these are things that we're going to be looking at in, in what we discuss in today, today's video. So the first idea I want to introduce is the concept that forces work in pairs. On every, in whenever we, we're, we're thinking about forces that act in, on, on an object, um, little objects, big objects, distant objects, or, or you know, objects in contact, that there are the forces that work together in, in, like there's always two forces for every interaction. Okay, and that they are the same type of force, so both pushing, both pulling, um, or, or whatever that might be, but they work in opposite directions. So you can see with the images here we got on the screen that we've got um, two pushing forces here. We've got the pushing on the wall and then the force of the wall pushing on the person. We've all experienced this, especially if you happen to run into a wall, for example, that you've, you've felt the, the, the significance of that particular force. And then we're looking at a slightly more complicated example of a plane, that there are two different pairs of forces that act on a plane as it's flowing. So we've got a, a pair that's acting here, where we've got the lift force that's causing the plane to, to stay aloft in the air. We've got the weight force, which is the name for the, this force due to gravity. We've got the thrust of the, the action of the propeller causing the plane to move forwards. But we've got the drag force, which is the air resistance of, you know, the, air, the, the, the contact force of the air pushing against the plane, slowing it down. So two different pairs, same type of force, but opposite in direction. So then what we're going to consider is what happens with the, the, with the nature of each pair? What happens if the forces in the pair are equal in size, that is they're balanced? So they're in opposite directions, but they are the same magnitude or same size of force. Well, what happens then is that effectively the forces are cancelling each other out. If you look at the situation where we've got two people pushing on the same box with the exact same force, that those, their forces are cancelling each other out, meaning that that box stays e e exactly where it is. Or if we consider our table, we have the weight of a, of a block on that table, but then we have the reaction force of the table, meaning the block doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't spring up in the air, and it also doesn't fall down through the table to the centre of the earth. It stays put. And then over here, what we're thinking, a slightly more complicated example, is that we have balanced forces between the two cats on top of the seesaw and the the force of the the fulcrum of this pivoting point of the sea, and then the seesaw itself pushing back on the cats with the same size. So we see that when we've got equal sizes in opposite directions, they cancel out, which means that um, the net movement or that there's no movement involved. Okay, to help show you that a, a little bit um, a little bit further, a specific example. So let's consider a box that's got these four forces acting on it. And these forces are actually measured, given their, their measurements in newtons, the unit of force. So each arrow represents a force in a given direction. So we've got a pair of forces that are highlighted with the red box on the left and right, and then a pair, another pair of forces highlighted with the blue, which are up and down. But we see that if we if we look at each of these pairs, that they cancel out exactly. We have two newtons and two newtons, five newtons and five newtons, meaning that overall that they've cancelled out, and so we have what we call the net or overall force is zero. 
this is the force that is left over once we've considered all of the, the different forces that are acting on a given object. And so essentially once everything has cancelled out that means that we have no movement. Okay, that there's no overall force pushing the, the, the box or pushing the object one way or another. So it stays put. But what happens if we uh, have an unbalanced force? So if, or if where we have a, a pair of forces but one of the forces in that pair is unequal in size, it's greater than the other, then they don't cancel each other out. We have a net force that is greater than zero. So it, in, depending on how big it is, depends on, on how um, the greater the difference between the forces. But then what that gives us is we get object movement. So if we have one person pulling with a force of 50 newtons and one person pulling with a force of 30 newtons, we have a net force of 20 newtons, which is the difference between these two. And that's 20 newtons heading towards the left, so the rope gets pulled to the left. And likewise, that then if we have a bird here, then you know, it's dropping kind of down its weight force, the force of gravity is greater than the force of the air friction pushing it up, so it falls to the earth. Okay, so in each of these situations that one force is greater than the other and so then we get a movement in a given direction. Now, so, so what I was saying before is that this idea that the size of the, the, the force that's left over once we cancel things out and the direction that it takes is what makes the biggest difference to the motion of that object from there. Okay. So we've recapped what we meant by a force, a push, a pull, or a twist, or something that can cause an object to change its motion in some way. We've seen that forces work in pairs. We've got the same type of force in opposite directions. If those forces are exactly the same, they cancel out, we have a net force of zero and we get no movement. If one of those forces is different to the other, is greater than the other, we have a, a net force that's greater than zero and we have the object moves. And the size of that force and its direction dictates the movement of that object. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.